Um, so yeah, today I'll be giving you a bit of an introduction to Vattenfall, our involvement with e-mobility, our involvement with the Soski and Charge My Street projects, and a bit of insight into our vision for the future on how we can make scalable infrastructure and make sure that the grid can cope with the additional demand of electric vehicle charging. Um, let's see. So yes, Vattenfall is, as John said, a Swedish company. Uh, we're a Swedish state-owned utility. Um, we're one of the largest generators of renewable energy in Europe. Um, and for us, everything changed about six years ago. Uh, so six years ago, um, the, the board has looked at the company and decided that a shift needed to happen. And the shift couldn't be a gradual shift, it needed to be an aggressive shift, away from fossil fuels and away from uh, CO2 emissions. So the company adopted a mission to enable a fossil-free way of living within a single generation. That means that our own generation needs to be zero emission, but also the solutions that we provide to people at homes, the businesses, and to local authorities need to enable them to live that lifestyle. So for example, we've invested a lot in the fossil-free generation um, and creation of steel. Um, and um, off the back of this, we've also entered e-mobility um, about 10 years ago. So when you look at Vattenfall over the last 10 years, um, we've heavily been investing in wind um, and solar and hydro as the main generators um, for electricity. We've entered the UK about a decade ago, and I would say that the UK is probably the best example of how we want to operate our business going forward. As in the UK, over the last 10 years, we've invested about three and a half billion pounds, mostly in the development of wind farms. So we now operate 11 wind farms on and offshore in the UK, of which the closest is about 20 miles away from here. Um, it's called Ray Wind Farm, just north of us. So these wind farms generate enough electricity every year to fully fill about 250 million Nissan Leaf batteries. Not nearly enough Nissan Leafs on the road. So most of that goes to um, the wholesale markets to supply homes. About two and a half million British homes are powered by Vattenfall renewable electricity. So most people, like John said earlier, don't know about us, but in the background, we've been doing a lot of work in the UK. Then over the last three to four years, we've been launching new business units in the UK as well. So a district heating team um, to decarbonize heating solutions. I've heard um, someone touch on it a bit earlier during the presentations, um, tapping into heat sources underground and using those heat sources to heat up homes above the ground. Um, or even going as far as using the heat in the tunnels for the tubes for uh, the TFL systems and recycling that heat to heat up buildings and homes above ground once more. Um, we've launched um, battery and solar teams. So whenever we've got wind farms in the UK, we co-locate them now with battery and solar um, so that when there is too much energy being generated uh, to match the demand, we store them um, in the large battery installations. And whenever there is more demand than renewable generation, um, we offload it into the grid again to make sure that whatever we generate will not be wasted and is used in the most efficient way. Um, we launched an IDNO team um, to make sure that we can set up smart networks uh, once more, mainly with the aim um, of supporting decarbonisation. And last but not least, um, we have entered e-mobility in the UK as well. And I must say as well, um, our mission um, to support everyone um, towards a more fossil-free way of living and is also a big part of our involvement with Daniel Soski and the Charge My Street project. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone, regardless of where you live, has access to fair e-mobility, um, easy access at acceptable prices, regardless of you live in a terraced house, a flat or in a mansion. So, a bit more detail on our involvement in e-mobility. We've entered e-mobility in the UK about two years ago, but we brought a lot of experience and history into the market. Um, so our first steps into e-mobility um, were taken in 2009 in the Swedish and Dutch markets. Um, here is a bit of a timeline. I'll take a few key dates out of this. 
Um, the first one is in 2010, we joined venture with Volvo to develop the V60 plug-in hybrid. Why is this so important? Um, it allows us to look in the future, basically. As the charging market and the infrastructure market, um, we follow whatever the manufacturers do. We follow the OEMs. Um, and being so closely involved in the development of vehicles and even joint venturing with OEMs to develop vehicles, it means that we've always got a finger on the pulse and it means that we're never surprised by developments in the markets. We can more precisely and accurately future-proof our solutions, which means that the investments we make in infrastructure um, will last longer. Second one is the Amsterdam public charging concession, which we won in 2011. Uh, today, Amsterdam is the single largest city network in Europe with over 4,000 charge points. Um, similar argument as the last one, but from a different angle. So the Amsterdam market, or the Dutch market, I should say, is about four to five years ahead of the UK. So it also once more allows us to try and test solutions in a market which is a few steps ahead before we take it to the UK to make sure that we don't make the mistakes anymore that we've made in the past and can um, more accurately invest once more in infrastructure. Um, skipping quite a few years, um, in 2017 um, we've launched a project um, which was aimed at consolidating the different networks that we were operating. So until 2017, we saw that there was always quite a local demand and um, we, we, we've kind of had different solutions in different markets or in different areas of the markets. Um, in 2017, the decision was made that going forward, um, this would not support the market anymore um, in the growth um, that um, we were predicting. Um, so we needed to look uh, at the more pan-European approach and to make sure that the solutions that we were rolling out were integrated with each other. Then skipping to 2019, uh, a real key year for us, um, VPEC and Soski. So the Soski's project um, is, is one that you're familiar with right now. Um, we're expected to deploy about 200 charge points um, in the region in the coming 12 to 16 months, um, but obviously growing as demand grows as well. The VPEC project is a second Innovate UK project that we're involved with. Um, it is a project together with Virgin Media, so that's Liberty Global, um, where we have to deploy 12 on the charge points throughout the UK in the coming 12 months. And it has a very similar purpose, um, but um, in a very different environment. So where the Soski project aims to give access to people that don't have access to their own um, driveways um, in more rural areas um, and is leveraging um, community funding to make sure that the business case stands up and that is mainly because the expected usage of the assets is a bit lower in these areas so the business case individually usually wouldn't stand up. The VPEC project um, also targets people that don't have their own driveways but in heavily urbanized areas the city centres of London, Manchester, Birmingham and Liverpool, where the usage is expected to be high. However, the cost of deployment is expected to be very high to the locations as well. So the business case doesn't stack up either. So what do we do under the VPEC project? We use the existing Virgin Media communications and power infrastructure to co-locate charges in highly urbanly dense areas. So between the two projects, we have to deliver about 1,400 charge points over the coming 12 months, which will make a real, real difference to um, a lot of people that would not have access to e-mobility solutions before. At the end of the deployment timeline, we should be the third biggest public charge point operator in the UK um, within two years after entering the market, which I think is a very strong show of our commitment um, to the market. Um, goes without saying that each and every charge point that we deploy will be powered by uh, preferably local, um, but if not local, by renewable wind and solar assets which we operate in the UK. So what does 10 years or 11 years of e-mobility operations throughout Europe look like? Um, we've got about 15,000 public charge points that we manage directly mainly in the Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, Norway, um, and also in the UK now, expanding into France um, and Belgium and also Denmark and Finland now. 
Um, about 750,000 drivers throughout Europe have access to our network. Um, some of them uh, directly, others through roaming solutions. Let's see. And over here, it gives a bit of representation of the total network. So 15,000 charge points under our own management, an additional 50,000 accessible through roaming, and we expect to hit an additional 80,000 uh, through roaming in 2019. Um, I think roaming is a very key uh, subject. It's also one of our commitments under the Soski project that um, we want to make life easy for local residents. So whatever existing infrastructure is in place already, we will be reaching out to those operators to set up roaming agreements if they are willing to do so. Um, I think it's a real key area of the market, also a bit of a tricky one sometimes, as we are competitors. Um, but in my opinion, um, the way it should be looked at is that whenever we are bidding for infrastructure, we are competing. In the end, um, it's, it's, it's companies that need a sustainable business model in order for us to keep on deploying the infrastructure. However, once the infrastructure in the ground, we shouldn't look at competitive networks as competitors anymore. They should turn into partners. Um, and that is um, something that we will very strongly be supporting in the local region over here. Um, so going um, towards uh, the future, um, in Amsterdam we've been so successful with the uptake of electric vehicles, which is a bit weird because Amsterdam in many ways should be the least successful city when it comes to EVs. Um, only 10% of people in Amsterdam have their own driveway, so everyone is reliant on public parking and public charging infrastructure. However, the government had a very aggressive stance a couple of years ago and said, if you want to drive an EV, contact us, request the charge points, and we'll find the nearest place to your home where we can deploy it. Um, research has shown that people need a charge point within about 300 meters of their home in order for them to be confident enough to invest in an electric vehicle. Um, people that drive electric vehicles know that most likely, um, there is no need for you to charge it every day, but you only find out after you first get into an EV. So in order for people to take that first step and invest into an electric vehicle, they need to have the confidence that either a charge point is within direct sight of their front door, or if they ask for one, it will be there. Um, so in Amsterdam, we'd seen that after this policy was adopted, uh, there was a very sharp increase in the amount of electric vehicles in the city sharp enough for more than 4,000 charge points to be installed in a very, very small area, which means that now Amsterdam is struggling with the grid. It's a very old grid. It cannot cope with the additional demand, um, largely because normal charging behavior coincides with whenever your household appliances are at max demand. You get home after work, the TV goes on, uh, the cooker or the microwave, etc. the lights go on, the car gets plugged in. So those two peaks hit at the same time. And we've done a lot of thinking about how we can use smart charging, but also renewable energy to make sure that we can still scale infrastructure without having to heavily invest in additional uh, grid um, demand and infrastructure. And we've come up with a project called Flex Power. I've made life a bit easy for myself. There's a, there's a video behind here which um, should be playing in a minute or so, um, giving you a, a quick overview of what Flex Power is and what it does and how it will help um, scale infrastructure going forward.
Introducing the Flats Power Amsterdam Project. Energy supplier at New Order. Group operator Leander, Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, Innovation Centre Elon NL, and the City of Amsterdam are currently testing a new way of mass charging electric vehicles simultaneously using flexible charging schemes. We're doing this to answer that one important question. How can we make sure that in the near future we can keep providing our city with the sustainable energy it needs when needed? By redesigning our city today, we'll be able to tackle tomorrow's problems. That's why we've made some improvements to our charging stations. By introducing standardized protocols, we've made them smart and future-proof. A smart charging station balances supply and demand by adjusting the speed of energy transfer from our grid to our electric cars. That means faster charging when the total demand for energy is relatively low and slightly slower charging when the city's energy use is at its peak. This will help us to better manage the rush hour peaks on our electricity grid. And that's not all. Smart charging also balances and supports our use of renewable energy. In the near future, charging will be even faster when the sun shines, or when the wind blows along our streets and canals. Eventually, all our electric cars will be charged more efficiently, faster, cleaner, cheaper. Flexible power by charging smart. Amsterdam, smart charging the future. There we are. Nuon is Vattenfall, by the way, so Nuon is one of the Vattenfall uh, subsidiaries. Um, let's see. Um, so yes, Flex Power Amsterdam. Um, by now, uh, this video um, is about eight months old. 900 of the 4,000 charge points in Amsterdam are directly connected uh, to the Flex Power network. Um, until now, 70% of fully electric vehicles have actually experienced quicker charging and only 15% um, of people that have plugged in at actual peak demand times have experienced slightly slower charging. Um, so it is not only um, a more flexible way of charging, but this flexibility actually allows us to pass a benefit on to the driver by providing them with a quicker charge. Um, it is not only important um, because of the higher demand um, from the electric vehicle side, it is also important because as we grow the amount of renewables within our grid system, renewable generation is unpredictable. We cannot 100% rely on when the sun is going to shine, how much the sun is going to shine, or when the wind is going to blow and how much the wind is going to blow. Um, so this allows for us to um, balance out the unpredictable nature of renewable generation. What's on the roadmap going forward? We're looking at vehicle to grid, for example. And we've currently got um, a development roadmap together with Honda, with whom we've announced a partnership about two weeks ago where both for the public space as for the home space, um, we're looking to integrate vehicle to grid um, as a commercially viable solution by 2022 within the flexible charging profiles. Um, a step one for that right now is that uh, drivers um, that will be charging at home, for example, um, will have the ability to say, I need to drive off tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Um, charge my vehicle whenever it's cheapest or whenever the grid demand is lowest, um, I leave it to you. And our systems will decide whenever that is most relevant for that specific driver. Um, so both in the public space um, as in um, the home space and in the business space, we're doing a lot of work on not just looking at charge points as an output for your electricity, but as a part of the wider energy infrastructure, um, as it will become very, very relevant when it is not just 200 charge points that are installed over here in the area, but whenever we hit that number of 1,000, 1,500 charge points. Um, I can go on about that for quite a long time, but conscious of time. <laughs> um, a last slide as well, um, which summarizes or charge my street promise. So for the region, um, we, we, we promise to only install future-proofed hardware um, with flexible and dynamic balancing um, ability. Um, we also promise to be fully agnostic, which means that if we see a need for a different type of hardware, uh, for whatever reason, we have the ability to react to that. Um, 
for the software solutions, um, we promise um, that there is flexibility. Um, so you can control your charge points um, as a single charge point or as part of a network. Um, so that for different types of driver groups or for the local residents, you can set different user experiences. If you've got charge points which you just want to be used for the local residents, we've got the ability to, for example, give local residents a lower rate to charge at those charge points to really pass that benefit on to them again. We've got 24-7 customer service, the ability to react within two hours if there is anything that needs um, imminent support um, and promise to be fully interoperable, um, as said earlier, um, looking to engage with all of the existing networks in the region. Last but not least, driving on wind, um, dedicated uh, wind farms. We'd be looking to use the Ray Wind Farm 20 miles away from here to supply the charge points that we will be installing in the local region. And with all of the installs, we keep in mind that the design allows us to, in the future, run a similar sort of project as with Amsterdam, um, flex power. That's it for now.